Hi everyone and welcome back. I hope you're doing really well. I'm just coming on today to talk to you about the solar eclipse we will be having on April 30th, 2022, uh, right at the end of All Planets Direct. It is such a uh, such an appropriately timed eclipse and what are the odds that we would be having a solar eclipse right at the end of this oddly long uh, phase, three month phase almost of having no retrogrades. And um, yes, it's been a very changing time for a lot of people. Um, a lot of shifts in mindset, a lot of shifts in value happening. And this solar eclipse is going to be um, along those lines as well. Um, it's actually, I think, quite a good timing for a solar eclipse. I find that this period of time, you know, coming out of All Planets Direct, um, it will help us to uh, naturally shift paradigm, which is what an eclipse always asks for, as well as the end of an All Planets Direct cycle. So I have made a brief outline and uh, similar to the Jupiter-Neptune conjunct in Pisces video that I recently made, I'm going to let the energy guide me a bit uh, through it. So um, let's see, what do I have to tell you guys about this eclipse happening at the end of April? Um, the first thing is it's really imperative to see or mark some type of change or pivot. All right, uh, this solar eclipse is happening at 10 degrees of Taurus. And uh, when we have a solar eclipse happening um, at that degree point in the uh, first half of a sign, it usually means that we're choosing to pivot or we're choosing sometimes to walk things back or choosing to uh, switch lanes or something uh, early on. Um, you know, for example, when we had the uh, what was termed the Great American Solar Eclipse in 2017 that happened at uh, 29 degrees of Leo, I believe it was, um, that required a full on like transformation after a long story and put a lot of people into like a catalyst uh, perspective in their lives. Um, and that is what a solar eclipse, uh, for, especially in like the anoretic degree of a sign does. But being that this one is happening at 10 degrees at an earlier degree point, it means that there's more of a preemptive shift or a preemptive transformation that is denoted. All right. So um, this solar eclipse, yes, of course, is happening in the same sign as the nodes. Now, they are not uh, close in degrees, but um, I have to brace you guys for something. This is really crazy for those of you who are um, who have been listening to my channel for a while. Um, you've been hearing me talk about certain timelines, and I looked forward a little bit. Um, and because I was asking myself if I was, as I was looking at this solar eclipse, I'm like, well, it's not really in orb to that much stuff. Um, and it's kind of out of orb to the nodes, but um, it made me think like, I bet that this solar eclipse happening at 10 degrees of Taurus will have a big uh, effect on the period of time when the node when the nodes get to that point as well. So I looked forward and guess when that is? That's January of 2023. You guys know I've been talking and talking intuitively about January of 2023, and um, it's saying to me, that this eclipse happening on April 30th is going to deeply motivate the outcomes and the decisions that we're making during that time. And I was telling you all, I believe in the nodal paradigm video, which I'll link below and in the top right hand corner, um, I was telling you about how we had two really distinct uh, decision points that felt like July 2022 and January of 2023. And um, that many of the signs were faced with a big crossroads or faced with a major, like a yes or no decision, almost like an ultimatum energy. And while we might not be seeing it super directly with this eclipse, the choices that we make during this time of April 30th, ending all planets direct, are going to really fuel our mindset, our motivations, and our basic, basically, uh, it's going to give us a lot of intel about this decision, this big decision, like life-changing decision that a lot of us are faced with coming at the end of 2022 and beginning of 2023. Um, you know, 2022 as a year has been so much about uh, resolution and about getting things uh, figured out to the extent that you don't have to worry so much about problems that may have been uh, on your plate for such a long period of time so that, okay, so that you actually have the ability to kind of actualize and elevate off of these like kind of non 
uh, path-oriented issues you might have been dealing with. So small inconveniences, uh, habits, addictions, um, unfinished stories, things that you always wanted to finish, projects that weren't done, um, things that you made a lot of progress on but couldn't quite um, wrap up or have completion with is happening for a lot of people in this year because we have Jupiter, Neptune, and Pisces really giving people a lot of luck and uh, motivation around those ending phases and around those uh, steps of completion. So with that in mind, this particular solar eclipse looks to me like a very powerful time to understand if something is in an ending phase, okay? If a project is needing to wrap up, okay? If a relationship is on its last legs, if a story that you are telling yourself or a narrative that you're weaving inside is also ending. So a certain self-projection or a certain self-dialogue uh, or mantra or series of self-motivational tactics, um, if those are ending as well. And how uh, nice it is to have quite a bit of time. I feel that this solar eclipse, for some people, they're just going to kind of pay it ahead or they're going to just institute some types of endings during this time. But for most people, it's going to stretch out to January 2023 when we really have the nodes reactivate this eclipse point. And I will say that, so April to January, what is that? Is that like 10 months, um, something like that? Nine months, interesting. That's sort of like a perfect time for Gestalt, isn't it? For a lot of people, they are really entering into a sacred kind of Gestalt with this solar eclipse. And it triggers them to really go into this nine-month phase, 10-month phase of um, truly comprehending what they want to participate in. So these degrees of Taurus, um, around like 8 to 12 degrees of Taurus, deal a lot with participation, okay? It deals a lot with like, um, because the sign of Taurus, the second house is about income, earnings. Um, it's about uh, the money you make from employment, about uh, the... Uh, in, to some small degree, connections that you have within the structure of employment, okay, especially these earlier degrees. Once we get to the latter part of Taurus, we kind of get to more of a sort of like wealthy feeling or more of a, um, you know, like a, I have more and I don't have to rely so much on other people. But um, for most people, their job or their employment is uh, denoting or saying a lot about their willingness to participate or who they're willing to participate with, what they're willing to be involved in. And that's really going to be coming up with this solar eclipse. Some people are not going to be satisfied anymore with what they're involved in, right? Because an eclipse always uh, suggests some type of ending and some type of beginning immediately. And there, with every eclipse, there is that. Though this is a partial solar eclipse indeed. So there could be a kind of like foggy feeling, again, with Jupiter and Neptune also being in Pisces. So um, I do believe that there is an ending and beginning happening uh, during this time, but for some people, it's like stepping into a chapter or a phase where they really have a huge level of that by the time the nodes hit these degrees where this eclipse is happening in January 2023. So thinking about that a little bit, um, what can you journal about or dialogue with yourself about that you want to see resolution on by January 2023? Um, you know, especially because we're in such a earthy paradigm and we kind of have been ever since we had 2020 and the Jupiter Saturn Pluto conjunction what that means is it's just not feasible for some people to say okay I want to change everything and I'm having it done by tomorrow it's not possible for most people to do that um, but really this is going to start being more possible to see resolution because I think so many people since 2020 have been in the space of where like I can't just keep on and and once you're looking at like a two or three year period I mean you really are getting into a, a level of time where you can see bigger changes or you can see uh, greater resolutions especially once we get to that three to five year point so really by 2024 and 2025 um, it's really possible to see yourself in a completely different stratosphere or a completely different uh, self-understanding as compared to where we were in 2020. And I would uh, venture to say that this period of time, April 2022 until January 2023, is the pivotal point, is the pivotal chapter, is the uh, point in time where we were actually in an open enough, almost liberated enough space to where we could actually comprehend where we want to be. Again, this is going to be tying directly back into those uh, intuitive messages I've been getting about third eye, about... Um, 
having a healthy third eye and being able to know what you want, being able to know what you don't want, being able to know what is false light as well. Let me really um, emphasize this point. Okay, so solar eclipse happening here with Jupiter and Neptune also doing what they're doing with um, also a really positive Gemini season coming up for a lot of people. Uh, I will tell you guys in advance, we're having a Mercury retrograde in Taurus that will exactly hit the nodes. Uh, so we've had a solar eclipse in Taurus. We're going to be having a Mercury retrograde in Taurus. All right. The Taurus Scorpio axis, but especially the Taurus side, is so activated with hard hitting transits right now. And if you're a Taurus person or if you have a lot of Scorpio, especially at this, like, um, I mean, really the whole sign because the nodes are in the 20s and then this eclipse is happening at 10 degrees. Uh, those of you who are from like zero to five degrees maybe aren't being hit so hard right now, but Uranus is also there, right? At uh, 14 degrees, I believe it is right now. Um, so the sign of Taurus, oh my gosh, such big changes happening to those people, but also that archetype. Again, that's um, income, that's value, that's material materialism, that's um, the feeling of abundance, the feeling of a status to an extent as well. And um, that's where we're going to be seeing a lot of shifts. This eclipse might really demonstrate a shift in groupthink, uh, being that Mercury is about to retrograde here and we've got the North Node there. We might not be pleased with what it means to be wealthy or what it means or what it takes to have like a high income or what it means or what it takes to participate or who we have to participate with, who we have to network with, and also... Um, the ties or the bonds that we have to establish in order to be doing quote unquote well. There's going to be a big change societally on those types of ideas. Like, um, would I rather have income like this large income or would I rather have a feeling of freedom? Would I rather have status or would I rather have, I almost want to say ease. Okay. Um, would I rather have, publicity or privacy, okay? There's gonna be some big changes because you know, we've come from a period of time here in the early uh, 21st century where you know everybody wanted to be like famous, everybody wanted to be like public, everybody wanted to be attractive and glamorous and um, you know, uh, just seen by others. And we're gonna see that in its negativity and the 2020 year cycle really catalyzed that. But um, now you could almost see a counterculture and a lot of people being like, you know, I don't want those beauty norms. I don't want um, to be like written about in the media. I don't want to be, I don't want my name in lights, you know? Uh, so this whole concept of light is a big thing. In fact, I've been getting a lot of downloads just around the word light uh, from a lot of different perspectives. So from weight, but then also from like emission or vibration, you know, like light sources or, um, how we see, you know, the sun being like a light source. And if it weren't for it, we would exist in a complete level of darkness. We wouldn't really exist in this form, uh, you know, but um, it might be good to have more light around you because there is a dark heaviness. And I'll talk about that for a second with this eclipse too, because really I think a positive way that we could use this eclipse energy would be to integrate a more light experience. Um, really? Okay. Uh, you know, because we have the south node offsetting this, and we also have the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in Pisces, we have Pluto uh, turning, having just turned retrograde in Capricorn as well, at 28 degrees, right at the Pluto return point for the United States, which I also made a video about. I'll link it below. Um, there's a lot of darkness. In fact, there is a darkness or a... And I don't want to say that it's a bad thing because, you know, shadow work and, and darkness, it's a part of the experience. You know, if you think of the yin and yang um, <clears throat> philosophies, and if you think about uh, how all spiritualities and religions have in some way integrated light and dark, uh, dark is not a bad thing, but I do feel that it is out of balance. Okay, I do feel that it's much more... Um, it is consuming much more space than the light. I feel that uh, the light forces are in minority at this point. And whenever there's uh, an imbalance, whenever you have one element or one vibrational level moving into majority, 
um, there's going to be a chemical reaction. Chemical is not the right word, but there's going to be like n- not just a reaction, but a kind of like because it, it starts to it, what's the word? It starts to manipulate or uh, tear the natural sphere out of its own proportion. It's like a chemical imbalance. It's like a hormonal imbalance. That's why so many people have those. Okay, right now is because of the, this, this is a big part of it. Um, and that's creating like an actual chemical reaction in the body, that's creating illnesses, that's creating a real physical effect. This is not just spiritual mumbo gumbo here, this is real physical stuff happening. And um, you know, we've seen that with, for example, abolition of daylight savings, okay, interesting, uh, to also be happening during this majority, majority kind of dark time. Um, and we've seen a time of war, we've seen a time of disease, we've seen a time of, um, homelessness we've seen a time of famine it really is being very clear but also on the more positive that darkness we've seen a lot of nice art we've seen a lot of nice music we've seen a lot of like also potential to dream or romanticize certain experiences and then also the ability to recover from trauma uh, by embracing the story that we went through so that that's why it happened because we got this entire like um new lens on trauma and this entire new phoenixian uh sort of revelation, I want to call it, like a revealing of a sort of Phoenixian sacred cycle. And um, because of that, I think a lot of people are romanticizing uh, dark energies or um, romanticizing uh, yin. Okay. And when I'm saying dark energies, that can mean different things to different people. So we should probably get a little bit of clarity um, there. Uh, It's when I'm saying dark energy, I'm meaning like the nocturnal experience. I'm meaning like the um, unseen path, uh, the counter path, the alternate path, the ability also to uh, really perceive synchronicity, the ability to uh, have things outside of obvious bounds or to uh, have a certain empowerment through uh, trauma, difficulty, or transformation. And um, when it's in its positive expression, these can all be really powerful healing experiences. But then in the negative, yes, we do have um, a lot of issues with like hidden power, with hidden wealth, with, um, you know, not really being able to pinpoint things. And then also having a lot of uh, culture of like lying and manipulation and uh, subterfuge and things like that. And that's not going to really change that much. But I do think that for us as individuals, if we can maybe offset this with a lighter, uh, more yang path, it might really uh, decomplicate our experience and uh, lead us to feel safer. Okay. Um, especially if you've been someone who's been working with like yin or shadow energy for such a long time now, and you might have kind of mastered that. And uh, it's interesting to see maybe a lightening of the load during this time or a um, even reduction for some people of income expenses uh, and uh, subsequently uh, energy spent and then also uh, like calories needed or energy in general needed in order to survive. It's all kind of relative. Uh, Learning that everything is relative is a good way to be channeling this energy, definitely. But to wrap up about this sort of like uh, power imbalance or this uh, sort of battle of dark and light energy, um, it's going. It's not in any way guaranteed in a result right now. Again, it's going to be until January 2023. Then also again, maybe even July of 2024. Once we get North Node in, I'm sorry, July 2023. Once we get uh, South Node in Libra, North Node in Aries, I don't think we're going to really know uh, that much about uh, how things resulted or the conclusion of things until then. But then there's going to be a very strong catalyst period of time throughout all of 2020 for especially that really shows us like how we planned, how we uh, chose to embark. And then also what we chose to accept into our experience. There's going to be a very high time of, what do I want to call it? Um, hard results or proof or measurements, even like, uh, reviews, okay, that really uh, demonstrate a lot of what has been happening. Um, so it's there's no need to worry too much about it. The, my main reason in bringing this up is just really at the personal level and the individual level. Um, you know, if you're thinking about taking on something really dark and complex into your life, okay, and a lot of people don't even realize because again, it's kind of romanticized with the Jupiter Neptune conjunction in Pisces. A lot of people don't realize how dark or complex some of the paths that they are stepping onto are. 
Um, so now's a really good time to be thinking about what don't I like about my experience? So, the, so here's really the meat and potatoes of this uh, transit in this video, being that we seem to really have this time from like April until January to really be uh, sitting with things, gestalt mode, stuff like that. Um, if you're lucky. If you're lucky, not everybody does. Some people are really asked to make the endings now um, because we do have Jupiter and Aries this summer, which is really wanting us to step out of our comfort zone and uh, be out of that. But then it retrogrades back into Pisces. So there's a complication there, which but then indicates also that once it goes into Aries again, and then I think once the nodes hit this eclipse point in January, there's going to be another opportunity. Okay, so if we need some extra time or we need an extension, I believe that that's here. Uh, but it's not going to feel quite so nice by January of 2023 to still not really be understanding our motivations, our purpose, or how things come together uh, as much as we can. You know, nobody knows everything. Nobody is the master of the universe. <laughs> but um, if we're totally confused, uh, this looks like a very solid time, April 30th, 2022, to start a cycle of getting things clear and getting things right and um, setting better boundaries and falling into a better state of uh, self-management. That seems to be an interesting term to think about with this is like how we're managing ourselves, especially if you're a very independent person and you have a lot of control. I mean, everybody has some control over themselves, but it's a sliding scale. You know, some people really have a lot more than others. Which is, a, which is a problem, but another video for another day. Um, if you have a lot of control over like, for example, what you do for a living, what you're, where you're living, where you're living, what you're driving, what you're um, spending your money on, um, if you have a high locus of control there, this eclipse has a big meaning for you, okay? Um, because most people at these earlier degrees of Taurus have choices made for them, okay? So this could be an employer, um, giving somebody a raise, elevating somebody, or uh, laying someone off even. Uh, this solar eclipse to me does look like that type of thing. But if you have more control, or if you're your own employer, or if you are in, a, in some type of authority position or something like that, it's a demanding eclipse. It's an eclipse that's really going to come up to you and be like, what the heck's going on? If, you ha if you're like really confused, or if you're in a power position, or if you're in authority over like other people, other people's paychecks or something like that, and you don't know what's going on, you're confused, um, we really have to see a getting of it together <laughs> or probably a planned exit or a planned uh, walking away uh, eventually. Because this transit as a sort of optimum energy would really start to be providing people the real resources or the real proof or the real authorization to step in to where they need to be it would there should be some type of positive communication here there should be synchronicities there should be like wow look at how great your company is like uh, helping the community or something and uh, here's like a reward or there should be uh, tars it's very real stuff right it's very um material results so also if something's off there should be kind of like a you know, uh, maybe a complaint or some type of um, situation that really shows it to us. So it should be a very open, obvious time of synchronicity for sure. And if you're getting this video before the eclipse, um, what a great window of time. And I'll be talking about this on Patreon for sure during the tea chat. So check that out. Um, it's linked below too. Um, yes, it's going to be good to mitigate things, to be in prayer, to be working on auric healing. I think the only way that we can move through this period of time with a sense of security is to have a healthy aura, okay? To not be stirring up trouble with other people, to not probably be taking unnecessary risks, all right? And to, again, just be healing up these third eye chakras so that we have a little bit more clarity, about where we want to go and then combining all of those things together should be a good good safeguard and um, help to navigate this very uh, pointy energetic time uh, it is indicating a precision or a sharpening or a type of um, maturity uh, through knowledge through strength through resources as well uh, that will be coming to fruition by january of 2023 
So whatever you can do to um, work with that timeline consciously can only be helpful, especially from that uh, point of like through having a healthy aura, through having a healthy chakral system altogether, uh, but especially third eye so that I can see through, have a bit of x-ray vision, have a lot of clarity. And then whatever I can do or whatever one can do also to pull back and to save more and have more surplus, that's going to be something that really clicks in with this eclipse too. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about in this video um, that I meant to talk about earlier, but I got distracted by some other really uh, glaring uh, energies, um, the effort we've been making over this entire All Planets Direct period since February, so February, March, and April, uh, that's going to be finalized with this eclipse. As Pluto goes retrograde on the 29th of April, I believe it is, and then this eclipse happens on the 30th, all planets direct is over, we move into retrogrades, and that is the mindset or that is the kind of state of being or understanding that we will carry for most of the rest of the year for a lot of people. Um, or that is the resolutions that we will, the, those resolutions that we've crafted or understood during February through April will likely be the guiding resolutions. So with that in mind, um, I would pay really, really strong attention to what you felt like you needed to quit during All Planets Direct, what you didn't need to participate anymore, who you didn't need to be around anymore, and um, the distance that you've hopefully already been able to gain from those things should have a high volume or a high uh, clear projection of like how much it's already helped you or how much it's valuable to maintain. Um, so that would be more front and center to me than what a lot of people's minds are actually on right now. Okay, this is an interesting distinction. So what we actually saw progress on February through April. If you can take time, like listening to this video, to maybe sum that up on paper, journal about that, that would be great. Like what actually in your physical experience changed, what you actually identified as a problem, or the way that you had a shift in mindset or value in your life. Also, anything relating to budget, material, holdings, anything like that, because this is in Taurus. Um, I would like to see you all thinking more about that stuff, um, especially if you haven't totally resolved it or if you um, haven't really been able to get it where you wanted it to be. I would rather see your thoughts there than on some of these more tangential, less problematic issues. I see a lot of people like in ADD mode or distracted by like a overarching goal, by a new path, by a sort of romanticized self envisioning, by the uh, virtual realities. Okay. That is occupying so much of people's conscious space right now, but I want to see you guys getting into a better like um, energetic spectrum space, like a more healed chakral system and a more um, clarified vision, all right, and a stronger connection to your present moment and the victories you are actually having right now, that would be really good to symbolize for yourself uh, during this transit and to celebrate during the eclipse. And also, I don't know, spending some time as much as you can just maybe getting everything out, like, I'm not satisfied with this. I don't want this in my life, especially if there's dissatisfaction or you have this like underlying gut feeling that you need to make a change, which I think everybody has to some degree right now. If you have that, um, try to get it out on paper, try to really push it out and then maybe make a resolution for yourself. Like, what does this look like not being a problem anymore for me? What do I look like as a person not struggling with this anymore? Um, also a lot of stuff relating to self-perception, which is going to grow in a kind of gestalt until January, 2023, you know, um, building identity in a healthy way can be good, uh, with this transit. So who am I, you know, getting it primitive, like questions like this, like the person that I see myself as in a healthy state does what, uh, lives where, um, eats what, uh, sustains themselves how, you know, it's like a good to understand these basic understandings so that we have a solid foundation, right? This Pluto retrograde, which I hope to make a video about if I have time is going to be about a new level of foundation crafting. All right. 
So whatever you can do to resolve these issues and kind of strike the gavel, okay? The eclipse point is going to be like a end of chapter. They always are. It's going to be so great. It's going to be so victorious for a lot of people, and it's going to shift the paradigm, okay? Everyone, I want to prepare you. I know that we're all kind of just feeling as if we're getting accustomed to this paradigm or just kind of getting our footing in this paradigm. But by the end of May, okay, because we're having a total lunar eclipse, then on May 15th or May 16th, depending on your time zone, total lunar eclipse happening um, in mid-May, uh, which will be the emotional version of this total sol this partial solar eclipse, okay? So we're having a more physical shift here at the end of April, then we're going to be having the emotions following in mid-May. And then we're going to be stepping into Gemini season for most of us in a very different boat or a very different comprehensive, comprehen comprehensive when I sit like a comprehension, our comprehension about our experience will likely be different at that time. And we might even start to be seeing like physical body changes or um, some type of appearance changes because these eclipses are really um, demonstrating a more material, more real uh, shift than, for example, the eclipses of the 2021 year cycle. All right. Um, so I'm wishing you guys all kinds of luck. I think there's a lot of room for positive progress here. I think there's a lot of room for understanding your wants and your needs beyond any type of illusion or beyond any type of like glamorization or, um, you know, smoke and mirrors that we can definitely see with this Jupiter Neptune conjunction. Um, so good luck with it, everyone, and uh, do check out the links below. Um, I'm on Patreon if you would like to get weekly tea chats to get further updates that are only available over there. Um, also check the videos I have linked below if you haven't been uh, having time to keep up with the channel. I've made a lot of, uh, I think, uh, good videos this month, so check it out. If you like this video, do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I would so appreciate it. And comment below. Let me know what you thought of the um, reading. Uh, so anyway, everyone, I will talk to you all soon. Have a great one. Bye.